Tamara Calder Richardson, and welcome to the Seeking Heaven Channel. Hello, and welcome to the Seeking Heaven Channel. I'm Tamara Calder Richardson, your host, a six-time near-death experiencer, as well as an evidential medium and Christ channeler and Starseed, which I don't mention much, but that might come up today. Look, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe, be a part of my spiritual community. You're totally welcome to be a part of it. Uh, make comments, like, share with your friends, as well as consider being a channel member. Your support is essential to growing this channel to the quality that you deserve. So thank you so much. Today's guest, super pumped. We're very, very uh, uh uh, honored really to have this guest today. And let me tell you a little bit about who's, who's here. It's, it's excited. I'm excited. And that would be Debbie Solaris. Now she has a military ex background, but what she's known for is being a galactic Akashic historian and it, as well as an Octorian contactee and communicator. She accidentally found herself on an Octorian mothership and they took her around. They talked to her. She's going to tell you all about it. And now she has this insight into our true galactic history, uh, as well as she does readings to let you know exactly where you're from and and, and your exact uh, soul path in a galactic type of way. I mean, she can do Earth, but other places. And it's just an amazing gift that she has. And she is known for also being on Gaia. She was a TV guest of the George Norrie show, Beyond Belief. And uh, she has some other things in the work. So we'll see. She's uh, quite an incredible person. And I would like to welcome her. Welcome, Debbie. Thank you for having me. Wow, what a quite the intro there. So thank you. You're making me sound good. So. <laughs> well, no, you you are good. I tell you what, I have been so excited about this and you and your message and who you are. And you're just so down to earth, too. Oh, thank you. No, I, everybody says that. And I'm, I'm just I just try to keep it real. You know, I'm just a regular person like everybody else, you know, just, you know, trying to trying to navigate myself through 3d reality here so <laughs> you know yeah. that's true that is that is uh that is difficult here and, and i think it's cute i've seen other interviews that you've done about that is a challenge for a lot of us especially those oh, it is feel like they're supposed to be here yeah no i get i i hear that all the time from the many star seeds i work with you know with my akashic reading you know um i guess that uh, practice that a lot of us are are a little bit challenged, you know, because it is kind of a difficult journey here. It was designed to be difficult because it's kind of PhD level. So, yeah. <laughs> it is difficult. And and I want to get into that exactly why we're here, humanity and all of that. But I want yeah, to gotcha. hear about you and your story, because I just think you're just such a real person. And for this to happen to you, it just it is it's amazing. It's magical. And it also kind of tickles me because the way how you're just so comfortable through how you navigate with this. Um, before we go into your experience that you had, I think you said it was after your back surgery. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you about your childhood. You said you were fairly normal. Did you and you grew up in a Roman Catholic family? Did you did you ever feel different? What was that like before we get into this big you know, big, okay, the big, the big uh, awakening story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was pretty powerful. Yes. Yeah, yeah, the big awakening story. Um, yeah, actually, it was pretty, pretty ordinary. Um, I, I don't think I had any special gifts, you know, growing up. I, you know, I was just kind of, uh, except for, I did. I think, um, I think this is a typical star seed trait with a lot of us that we kind of feel different, or we don't feel like we fit in, or. Um, we have this feeling that we came from somewhere else. Um, and I always thought it was, must've been adopted because I was so different from the rest of my family. <laughs> so always a little bit more sensitive, I guess, but as far as any special psychic gifts, I, I didn't really notice any until my great awakening, but, um, wow. but yeah, it was just pretty normal. Um, you know, I was, I was kind of a shy kid. I, uh, was a little bit of a bookworm. I used to like to read a lot. I still like to read, but, uh, uh, but no, I just, um, I mean, I think, I think it was a little bit traumatic at times because I was really sensitive and the world is so harsh. I mean, it's harsh for kids. I, I feel sorry for true. kids actually, but true. Yeah. yeah, but, um, but no, it was, but other than that, it was pretty normal. And I just, 
you know, I had a background, you mentioned my background in the military. I spent, you know, six years as a Navy hospital corpsman, um, you know, mostly stationed on Westpac, which was mostly California and Hawaii, you know, so I was in those areas and uh, um, was a preventive medicine tech. That was my specialty. And then after that, I worked in the environmental health field for a lot of years, you know, worked for local public health. So, um, really? so yeah, pretty ordinary background. Wow. That's amazing. Cause that is, that is pretty, uh, that does seem kind of ordinary, but then again, like you said, and, and I, I want to point this out, you're trying to fit into this 3d world and that's kind of a 3d job you described. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, it's very, no, I had a very 3d existence. Um, and it was, I mean, I think, you know, I, I did pretty good. I, you know, I think I was a fairly successful person. You know, I, you know, I, I, you know, I completed, you know, college and, you know, just did the normal things that most people did. So, um, so I think I was fairly successful. So, you know, there was no reason for me, you know, to try to get into the spiritual realm, <laughs> you know, I was just, you know, right. I yeah. Know. And I, I just wanted to add that I was very skeptic, skeptical of, yeah. ETs and UFOs, I didn't really believe they they existed because I came from a very scientific background. Um, sure. So, you know, I worked in a very left brain kind of field. And uh, so I was very kind of not not into the paranormal at all. Um, it was actually my my now partner um, who was more into it, you know, so he was really into it. But um, but me, not so much. So. Isn't that funny? I feel the same way. I thought it was interesting, sort of, but I never, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. the same thing. I, so you tickle me. There's so many people that are waking up now mm -hmm. that this is really exciting because it's not like that you uh, came in remembering all this stuff that you literally were ignited and, I was, and awake. I was asleep. I was so asleep. I was asleep. <laughs> I was asleep. I mean, it was, um, I mean, it's it, and just the way I, I woke up was so dramatic. I mean, you know, I think most people kind of go through a process. With me, it was just like one day I was asleep, next day I was totally awake. You know, so um, so it was a little bit dramatic for me. But it's different for all of us. I think our all of us have different journeys. You know, all of our spiritual journeys can be very different. Well, apparently, this is uh, you were ready for this. This is what you needed, and mm -hmm. you needed some kind of proof. And so, this is this is what you got. And I think that's important to realize that everybody's journey is completely unique no, and is. different uh, for themselves. So, so maybe um, start out. We kind of got an idea out of a picture. So, I love the part you were talking about, and I did see about the prayer. That was that must have been. I mean, that to me was powerful in your story. I don't know why, because it's like you'd let, that's how it all is that they're started. hearing us. They're hearing our thoughts and oh yeah, absolutely. everything yeah. that we do, like, are you real? What's going on? And they're, they're hearing they're they're We're connected by our energy. So speak about that. Well, um, this is a story I probably have told many times, but I'm always happy to share it because it absolutely changed my life. And if it inspires other people, then, you know, it, it I feel like it served its purpose. But um, um, so this all started in 2012. Um, and 2012 was kind of a pivotal year, I think, for humanity, uh, particularly with the um, um, you know, with the Mayan calendar, you know, ending and, you know, this new, you know, new era beginning and, you know, with all the, you know, I think social economic changes that were happening on the planet at the time, you know, so there was a lot, you know, pretty much going on during that time. Mm -hmm. um, um, so, so how, how it happened was um, I was going through a little bit of a transition myself. Um, my, my, my partner, you know, I, I call him my husband, but he's actually, we're, or a domestic partnership. So, um, so he's my partner, but uh, we decided we were going to move in together and we chose Castle Rock because it was halfway between Denver where he lived and Colorado Springs where I lived in Colorado. And, uh, and it was kind of a difficult transition. It was, you know, trying to combine two households into one and, you know, it's just kind of crazy, but um and I was having back issues at the time, you know, so, you know, I was going to see doctors, you know, talk, pain management specialists, you know, trying to figure out what to do with my back. And, 
in the meantime, I was working full time for, um, you know, El Paso County and Colorado Springs, you know, with their health, their, their public health department and, you know, just living a kind of a normal life. And but I was always really concerned about things that were happening and how it was impacting humanity. You know, like um, it just seemed like there was a lot of things that could be better, you know, on this planet. And yeah. so one night I went to bed and I was, I was worried. I always kind of joke that I'm not a spiritual warrior. I'm a spiritual warrior. <laughs> That's so cute. I love that. Yeah. I, I like it. I worry a lot. <laughs> well, it worked, whatever. It, it totally worked. Cause you, yeah, it, it, it worked. Yeah, no, it worked. worked. So but I was worried one night and I had a sleepless night and I was sitting there praying over and over again to the angels, to God, to Jesus, to mother Mary, whoever would listen to me. Um, so I was beseeching uh, assistance for planet Earth. You know, I felt like there was a lot that was not right and we needed help. You know, we needed divine assistance. And yeah. I even extended that prayer out to the galactic brothers and sisters, even though mm -hmm. I didn't really knew they existed. But I was like, what the heck, you know, I'll <laughs> yeah, pull it all in. <laughs> yeah, pull it all. Yeah. Pull, you know, just, you know, just send it all to everybody, you know, yeah. so. And, it, and I guess it must have been a more powerful prayer than I realized, um, mm -hmm. because at the time I was just kind of praying and it, I was I was very being very earnest and sincere. You know, I, I really wanted assistance yeah. for all sentient beings on yeah. planet Earth. And yeah. um, and then it was kind of like nothing happened after that. You know, it's like so I went about my daily routine and just kind of went on for two weeks and. I just forgot about the prayer, you know, I just figured, well, you know, another thing that I, you know, got into that, you know, didn't really pan out to anything. Because <laughs> um, um, I've, you know, said prayers to God before and, you know, you get mixed results usually. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but, um, but then uh, I, I, I had my little back surgery. So it wasn't a major surgery. I just had like a laser deal, you know, just to kind of, uh, you know, help with pain. And, uh, and about a th three or four days after the surgery, I went to bed as normal. And when I came back to consciousness, I was in a totally different reality, you know, so it was not, uh, and it wasn't a dream. You know, a lot of people say, were you just having a crazy dream? And I said, oh, no, it wasn't a dream. It was were more like a near death experience, actually. Uh, oh, okay. Well, that makes total sense. And a lot yeah. of near-death experiencers have also had um ufo experiences but they don't like talking about it i don't know why so were your was your um were you was you were you know for people listening were you physically not there or were you just your consciousness was just absolutely not in your body at that point um, I think I was there in my consciousness I don't think my physical body was there but when I looked at myself I looked like myself. Like if got I look at my hands, it looked I like, it. you know, so it wasn't like I was this nebulous kind of being. Um, I, I, I guess somehow retained, you know, some of my, you know, physicality, you know, right. So, right. Yeah. Your etheric bodies. Okay. Go yeah. ahead. So, um, so I found, I came to, and I found myself on what looked to be like, a, an extraterrestrial starship. I mean, that for, lack of a better explanation. Um, and it didn't look like metallic. You know, a lot of people think that, mm -hmm. you know, these extraterrestrial starships look like ships on Star Trek or Star Wars, you know, the popular sci-fi movies. And Right. Like my hollow deck back here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it doesn't look like that. It's a little bit more organic. I don't know. It's hard to explain. I mean, they have semblances of, I guess, structure you know it's there's a you know definitely there's there's structure there's you know rooms there's space you know but mm -hmm. it's very organic it's more comprised of light and plasma i don't know some sort of plasma like material mm -hmm. um which is really okay. speaking of extraterrestrial technology um uh, yeah it's right. very kind of malleable i guess um but the reason why i knew i wasn't having a dream was because the all the details were really crystal clear. It was super crystal clear. Okay. So, um, and the colors were brilliant. I mean, I don't think I ever had a dream that was 
that detailed, not even lucid dreams I've had were that detailed where it just seemed like I was in a different reality. And, right, uh, you know, so the ship seemed to be like a sentient being because it was kind of guiding me to a space and I just kind of followed along. Um, I, and a lot of people asked me if I was scared and I said, no, I wasn't really scared. I was just kind of curious maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and then I ended up in this kind of big, you know, orientation room kind of looks not unlike the room in your back, back, you know, background there. So kind of looked sort of like that. Um, so was it like a, uh, did it have a big window? I don't yeah, know. it had big windows. It had like a, it had a fireplace, which was kind of weird, but. Um, <laughs> Maybe it was trying to make you feel comfortable. Yeah, it was. That's what the Arcturians told me. It was to make me feel more like at home, I guess, or kind of mm -hmm. homey because earth people like fireplaces. That's what they told me. <laughs> that but, is really cute. It okay. is cute. I mean, that's what I loved about my interaction with the Arcturians is that they were, they, they had a great sense of humor and they were kind of poking fun, you know, a little bit, you know, with things here and there. And I, I love that, you know, they were trying to make me feel comfortable, you know? So, um, so anyway, uh, getting back to my story, I was in this space and there was like four or five extraterrestrial beings in this space. And I knew they were extraterrestrial because they didn't look like anything that came from earth. Okay. You know, there's no freaking way. Um, they were smaller beings. Uh, they had large heads, large, larger eyes. Um, the eyes had irises and pupils. So okay. was, was were it they like, like ours this way or up upright? They were kind of a little more, more almond shape, I guess. I don't know. A little more this upright. Way or this way. This way, I guess. A little bit more okay. al almond okay. shape. Um, and, uh, but they, but they had very kindly features. I mean, they didn't look like rays at all. Um, other than the fact that they had the larger heads and the smaller bodies, but, um, and their auras were huge. I mean, their auras were humongous. I mean, it was just, you know, tremendous. A light source, you mean the light source coming from them? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's like huge. And, and because their auras were so bright, I couldn't look at them directly. I had to um, kind of glance at them from my periphery. You know, that's how I was able to see what they actually look like. Uh, I think a lot of people don't realize that a lot of these extraterrestrial beings are much higher dimensional than us. And a lot of times they're pulling their vibration down in order just to communicate with us. So absolutely. I mean, yeah. so it's like you get blasted by their, you know, by their energy. I mean, it's just really intense. Uh, yeah. And how did they feel to be around? How tall were they? And how did they feel to be around? Did they smile? Did they have teeth? Um, I don't, I don't know if I noticed them like having big grins on their faces, but <laughs> I think they smiled. I, I think they were smiling. Um, it's okay. kind of hard to tell, but. Uh, big mouth, little mouth. So. Little mouth, little mouth. Yeah, they're their features were very refined and very delicate. I don't know how to describe it, but yeah, it was, I gotcha. Yeah. Okay. And they were, um, they, yeah, they were, they, they were kind of humanoid looking, you know, I mean, you know, but, but and at the same time, not humanoid looking. I don't know. Okay. How to, yeah. Did they have hair? No, no hair. Okay. Were they, how tall would you say? Probably about my height, if not shorter. Um, I'm about five foot. So, okay. Okay. Uh, You're short like me. I'm five, two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm a shorty. I used to be five, one. I shrunk. Darn it. So, I shrunk too. <laughs> you know, it's like getting older just kind of sucks. You know, it does. <laughs> it's not for well. So, <laughs> you know, so I was, uh, you know, so they were little beings, but, um, they had really big energy and they just emanated all this love energy. It's just like, uh. you, you, I mean, it, it, it just want to bathe in their love, you know, their love energy because it's just mm -hmm. so, so amazing, you know. So, um, you know, so I was, I was formulating questions in my head and I was trying to figure out how do I communicate with these beings? Because I don't even know if they know English, you know, I mean, it, you know, that was the thought I had at the time. I mean, now I know they know all languages. I mean, they, yeah. you know, but um and even before I would finish my sentence in my head, they would be answering my questions. Wow. It was amazing. That's, That's how easy telepathy is. It's 
so freaking easy. Um, no. I can't wait till we go to telepathy, <laughs> make life so much quicker. easier. It's quicker, isn't it? Well, yeah. with some people you'd, you'd, you know, you can have that. My mom and I finish each other's sentences all the time. It's very odd. And she'll say it the exact same time I do. So that's probably one of our natural states. Yeah, no, I think it is. Um, there's a few friends that I have kind of a telepathic connection mm -hmm. with, but very few. They're the very high vibrational ones. You know, so right. Yeah. So. Um, so did they and, tell you why they were the, why you were? Pardon me. Did they tell you um, why you were there? Did they give you like and and uh, when you're standing there, you were in this big open room. Was it white walls, gray walls? What was the colors? Um, I would say mostly kind of whitish, grayish, maybe, I, you know, it was kind of, um, very kind of plain. Um, you know, so, uh, you know, so I, um, so I think it was, it was kind of streamlined, you know, very kind of modern, um, but beyond modern, what you see here on earth, it was just very streamlined. Uh, they had a big holographic sphere in the middle of the room. And they would illustrate their concepts through the the hologram. Okay. So so it wasn't just them communicating with me verbally. There was also communication through the hologram with images and pictures and um, simulations and things like that, which was very interesting. Uh, never experienced anything like that before. Uh, so it just came out 3D in front of you. Yeah. Okay. And there was times where I felt like I was a part of it, you know, like if they were showing me like a simulation of future earth, I felt like I was there, you know, it was very, wow. it was very interesting, very, very interesting. Um, that's the kind of technology they have. It's amazing. Um, to answer your question about, did they answer my question about why I was there? Yes, yeah. they did. Yeah. They, they said they heard my prayer. And I was amazed because I was like, I forgot all about the prayer and and that they were impressed by it and that it was time for me to know who I really was and why I why I, why I'm at Earth, why I'm on Earth, you know, and I'm like, what the heck are they talking about? You know, um, and they told me that I was, you know, an Arcturian being, you know, that was, you know, just there you know, doing, I guess, the mission on earth and, um, and that, you know, obviously I'd forgotten, you know, because, you know, the density on planet earth is so heavy that we go through a veil of forgetfulness. Um, so we forget who we are, but, but they, they told me that I was there on a big mission and, and that I had Arcturian star family, you know, that, you know, my, even my physical genetics, um, was kind of come from, came from Arcturus, which was, not not a hundred percent of it, obviously, because I'm an Earth human. But um, but some, somehow there's a physical component to my connection with them as well. Um, Do, how does that? Uh, you know, I know you're on Gaia, and uh, and they also have. You know, I, I love that um, channel. I also, you know, we were talking about other shows on there, and uh, it's come up in the David Wilcox show, uh, Cosmic yeah. Disclosure, about the DNA and that most of us have alien DNA. Yeah. How come, I mean, this is maybe seems like, a, maybe you can't answer this, but why is it that, how would we not know that? And do we have the science to be able to, we don't have this. I mean, ancestry does not have, they can barely find out Cherokee Indians. They probably can't find yeah, they can't. And They're not quite there yet. No. Okay. I mean, okay. So they, they think, I think a lot of the, what they call junk DNA is actually, actually extraterrestrial DNA. Really? That makes sense. So yeah. the junk DNA is a very small percentage is probably because they just don't know what to do with it. Yeah. They don't know how to, you know, probably because it looks so different. They're just like, you know, I don't know how to test this, you know, but, um, but pretty much my understanding, you know, especially after, you know, spending time with the Arcturians on board the ship was that there was quite a few star races that were visiting earth, you know, early in earth history, they were colonizing mm -hmm. earth, they were visiting earth, they were doing experiments on earth. And a lot of them contributed their physical DNA to the earth, what I call the um, earth human genome project. So. <laughs> We're a project that's, <laughs> is that comforting? I don't know. I, I, I don't guess know. It's, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of I, I kind of believe we're all, we're high, we're a hybridized race of many different star people, you know, that, yeah. yeah. You know, so a lot of us carry Syrian DNA. A lot of us carry Pleiadian DNA. 
you know, some of us carry, you know, Arcturian or, or Andromedan DNA, you know, so there's, you know, there, and my understanding is about 22 star races that are were directly involved with this project. So that's why I see the same lineages over and over and over again when I do readings for people. Um, a lot of people ask me, like, do you ever get anything that's way off in some freaking other universe? Yeah, and yeah. I said, not really. It's okay. like very, very rarely. Occasionally I do, but very rarely. It's usually somebody from those 22 basic star systems that were in, directly involved with Earth. Um, so that so, would be the Orion, Cirrus, Pleiades, yeah, uh, Aldebaran, uh, Alpha Centauri. Arcturus, you know, so, okay. all, 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 ones. Yeah, okay. so all, the, all the ones that we commonly hear about, um, the majority of us have DNA that's connected to those systems. So I want to get back to your story, but I do want to ask you since we're, we, you brought that up in the DNA, because that's something yeah. that I know that people ask a lot about that yeah. are really interested in that. It's just like us as humans, you know, you may have a little bit of, you know, Italian, a little bit of Irish, a little bit exactly. of so and so. Yeah. So is it, is it common that you might have a little Octarian, a little Syrian, a little so-and-so, a little mm -hmm. mixture? Yeah. I would say pretty much most earth humans carry Syrian genetics. That's pretty much the baseline is, is Syrian genetics. Uh, and then you have, you know, certain percentages of, Pleiadian DNA, then you have certain percentages of maybe reptilian DNA, because reptilian is part of it too. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and a certain percentage of maybe uh, a smaller percentage of Arcturian or, uh, or even Andromedan or Orion, or, I mean, there's, you know, I mean, it runs the gamut, but right. yeah, but I would say we're all kind of a mix. We're kind of a Heinz 57. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And so this is to finish this last bit up, and this is an unusual question. Yeah. Um, we have this body. So you're saying in this DNA that we have this body right now, yeah. it could be an assortment of Heinz 57. However, we live many, many, many lives. Do we carry that same genetic code, that same uh, uh, non-human ET genetic code with us and the various bodies and the various planets with us? Because we do change bodies. Oh yeah, totally. Uh a lot of us carry soul DNA because we've had, you know, okay. you know, um, uh, we've had incarnations and, in, you know, many different systems, you know, so a lot of people, you know, I think they're kind of surprised when I say, well, you've been in this system, this system, this system. And it, it, it's like, they're expecting me to tell them, oh, you're Pleiadian, you know, and it's like, no, Pleiades was part of your journey, but maybe it was a big part of your journey, but you've been in other systems beyond the Pleiades, you know, or beyond Sirius or, you know, Andromeda, you know, so, so, you know, a lot of us, we've had these incarnations in these different systems. And so we pick up these DNA, I would say markers from these systems. And then we have to find a family here on earth. If we decide, Hey, I want to incarnate on planet earth. We have to find a family that carries similar DNA markers. I don't know if that makes sense. Like, uh, yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah. I'm following you. Yeah. Yeah. So, so a lot of us, when we make contracts in order to, I may be getting ahead of myself because we're talking about soul contracts a little bit. That's more, you know, maybe well, that's okay. We can go there and come back. That's yeah. That's so, um, so we make contract, you know, planetary contracts with planet earth. Um, we're trying to find earth families to incarnate into because we're not from earth. You know, we're, we have to make a contract with a family and so, or with some families. And so, you know, kind of like our, there's gotta be a, a DNA match. Okay. So in order for me, for instance, as an Arcturian star seed to incarnate on planet earth, I have to find a family that has a certain percentage of Arcturian DNA, you know, in order because to why? Yeah. Why? Because it wouldn't work otherwise? It, or? Would, it, would, it would not be a match. I would not be able to sustain my, the connection between my physical body and my soul body. Okay. That's yeah. it. It's the yeah. soul body and the body body. Cause the soul body goes to, through. It's kind of anchored to the, the, yeah. So there has to be a DNA marker that matches. Yeah. So um, that's, a lot of people don't realize that. And then we make contracts with these families, you know, like, Hey, if you let this little star seed here incarnate in your family, 
I'll clear your ancestral DNA for, or your ancestral karma for you, you know? So, so a lot of these families wanted star seeds, you know, they wanted us because there's a lot of karma on planet earth that needs to be cleared. So So really all these little star seeds, these little star seeds being born, when they come into the family, Mm -hmm. they actually help clear because their vibration is so high. They clear all this old stuff from the past. They sure do. Yeah. That's beautiful. So that's why when people watching, (laughs) that's why when you have someone who is a light worker, if you want to call them, whether you remember your star seed or not, and you're like, I'm the only one in my family and I'm so positive and they're so negative. That's why. Right? Yes. Why? Because we're so different. We, we're coming in with different frequency. And Got it. Yeah. That explains a whole heap of a lot of things. Yeah. Please subscribe, like, and make comments and support this channel by becoming a member. Thank you for your continued support.